thank you for joining us today in worship. We are still at home, as are you, and we understand that this COVID-19 pandemic is causing some difficulties for some people. Some are unable to go to work. Some are unable to get to loved ones that they wish they could be with. So this morning we just want to sing some worship songs and hopefully encourage your heart and remind you that God always keeps his promises. So join in with us and sing along.
Thanks so much for uh, worshiping with us today. Isn't it great to just take a moment and pause and reflect and focus on, on Jesus? Okay, well, maybe that moment didn't happen for you just now because you've got your kids running around or you're trying to do 18 different things while watching church. But you know what? That's okay. The important thing is that you're here, you've joined us, and you know what? You've survived another week staying at home quarantined. You know, one of the questions that we ask our daughter every night at dinner is, what was your favorite part of the day? It often sparks some good conversations, but it also, we're hoping, it teaches her to focus on some positive. It's all too easy to focus on the negative things that happen to us, especially in what's going on today. And so I just want to take a minute and ask you, what was your favorite part from this past week? Um, now, I know I changed the question a little bit, but I'm okay. it's okay. I'm allowed to, to do that. But what was your favorite part of this past week? Drop your answer in the, in the chat. We would love to see it. I'm sure others would love to see that as well. For me, it was actually shredding paper with, uh, with our oldest daughter. Yeah, you heard that right. It was uh, a household chore turned into some really good quality time. I had, we had a stack of papers that needed to be shredded, and so I started doing it. She joined in, and we had some really good conversations while doing it. We had some fun, and we turned it into a game even where we were feeding the, the shredder monster. And now every single day when my daughter wakes up, she asks if we're going to shred more paper. So um, what was, that was my favorite part. What was your favorite part of this past week? Well, our mission at Next Level is to love Jesus, love people, and make a difference. And can I just say that you all continue to live out that mission every single day during these times, and that's so exciting. Just a few weeks ago, we, we did a food drive with Thrive, where we asked to provide food to help restock their pantry because their, their requests for food have increased during this season. And you all provided 742 pounds of food, which provides 618 meals for those facing food security, insecurity in our community. And that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. But I'm not done. Last week, we were able to provide lunch for the doctors, the nurses, the staff at Riverside Hospital by sponsoring the food truck Flame and Pie. So anyone who ordered from their lunch from Flame and Pie was, um, had it covered because of your generosity. So 105 doctors, staff, nurses from Riverside had a free lunch because of you. Um, so thank you for that. But hold on. There's more. Because of you continuing to stand with us and continuing to keep Next Level strong financially during these times, we're able to continue to support uh, financially organizations in our community like Thrive. You see, not only has Thrive's request for food increased, but their requests for financial assistance have increased as well. People are needing help paying their rent, their mortgage, their utilities. And because of your generosity, we're able to continue to support them and help Thrive meet those needs in our community. And so thank you so much. You all are awesome. Your generosity is inspiring. It's humbling. Thank you for continuing to live out our mission and continuing to make a difference in the 757. You know, if you want to jump in and be a part of what God's doing in and through Next Level Church uh, by giving financially, you can do that in one of a few different ways. You can click that give button in the top right corner. You can also click the link that's going to show up in the, the chat the chat box there. You can also go to nextlevelchurch.net. All three of those are um, going to take you to our giving portal uh, where you can give safely and securely by setting up uh, online giving, uh, either recurring or a one-time gift. Or if you'd prefer, you can text next level give to 77977. And if you usually give during with uh, cash or check, we invite you to consider some of these options uh, during these times and take advantage of the electronic options that we've provided. If you need any help or have any questions, feel free to contact us at admin at nextlevelchurch.net. Well, 
It's no secret that our lives have all changed dramatically over the last few weeks. If your house is anything like mine, your, your life now involves trying to teach kids uh, whatever they're learning at school while trying to entertain them, all while, and on top of that, trying to be somewhat productive at your job, and then trying to figure out what's the best, safest way to go grocery shopping. And even if you can't relate 100% to, to that scenario, odds are that your life has changed in some way. And that brings us to today's service. We're in part two of our Lyrically Speaking series, where we take a look at a featured song and try to pull out what, what um, what it teaches us about God, what it teaches us about life. And our song today um, is speaking directly to life changes. In fact, it's in the title. And so I present Thomas Rhett's Life Changes. Yeah. Waking up in my college dorm. Yeah, my life, it was pretty normal Looking for a date to the spring form I wasn't worried about nothing else, no Majoring in undecided Notebook full of bad songs I was writing Never dreamed anybody else would like them Now sitting on a Walmart shelf Ain't it funny how life changes Wake up, ain't nothing the same And life changes can't stop it, just hop on a train and you never know what's gonna happen. You make your plan and you hear God laughing. Life changes and I wouldn't change it for the world, the world, oh no. And I wouldn't change it for the world, the world, oh no. I bought a ring and she said I do But everybody else said, man, you're 22 What you trying to prove? Hey, why don't you wait? Cause I've been waiting on her since the second grade And now she got her own set of fans She got a blue check mark by her Instagram And I wrote a little song about holding her hand Now everybody wanna die happy now Ain't it funny how life changes Stuff ain't nothing the same And life changes can't stop it, just hop on a train and you never know what's gonna happen. You make your plan and you hear God laughing. Life changes, and I wouldn't change it for the world, the world, the world. And I wouldn't change it for the world, the world, the world. I remember the day I told my daddy and mama, You're gonna have a grandkid, yep. From Uganda, that's right, we adopted, and she is the cutest little girl that you ever seen. While well, I was wrapping my head about being a dad, a big wrench got thrown in the plan we thought we had. Now, Lord, showing God one on the way, yeah, that's two under two A. Ain't it funny how life changes? Wake up, ain't nothing the same, and life changes. You can't stop it, just hop on a train and. You never know what's gonna happen You make your plan and you hear God laughing Life changes And I wouldn't change it for the world Life changes And I wouldn't change it for the world Life changes And I wouldn't change it for the world Life changes And I wouldn't change it for the world Life Changes and I wouldn't change it for the world. Ain't it funny how life changes? Earlier this year, before COVID 19 or social distancing, our programming team met to discuss songs for this series, Lyrically Speaking. And the one song that got the most votes that all of us agreed upon was Life changes. We had no idea at the time when we picked that song what we would be going through right now. The chorus for the song sings, ain't it funny how life changes? You wake up, ain't nothing the same, and life changes. I feel like we can all relate to those lyrics. Even if you hate country music, you can relate to those lyrics. So much has changed for us during this season. Some of you that are watching this, you are high school seniors and a lot has changed and you had to wake up to your new normal. The new normal says that you're not going to get the typical graduation. You're not going to get the typical prom. That's is, this is your new this is your new reality. Some of you are, are watching this who are struggling because your job has 
has changed. You've been forced to make a change. Either they have stopped working or they've made cuts or, or, or layoffs or there's been some massive changes and you woke up to face this new this new normal. We have friends who had the very first cruise they ever they ever were going to go on. Their first cruise vacation was planned and they were forced to cancel it because of, of COVID-19. There are some big, massive changes that are completely out of our control. Uh, my, my favorite basketball team, the Los Angeles Lakers, for the first time in six years was actually having a winning season. And I had tickets to go see them play on March 28th. And that game is postponed. Life is changing. My, my twins turned nine in March and we had already bought all of the supplies for them to have a Hot Wheels birthday party. We had bought the pinata and the, the streamers and everything that goes along with the party. We had invited all their friends and we had to make a change. And when I say we had bought all that stuff, what I mean is my wife had bought all of that stuff. She had done all the prep for it, and we had to make a change. We had to tell her friends, sorry, we, we can't gather together. We can't, we can't bring you to celebrate this. There have been so many massive changes that we've all gone through. But I want to make sure that, that you get this, that life changes isn't something that we're just experiencing right now. No matter who you are, no matter if you're rich or poor, no matter if you believe in Jesus or if you'd say, hey, I'm skeptical about it, one thing every single one of us has in common <clears throat> is that we all are going to experience life changes. Disappointments and major changes are a part of life. If you have ever lost a loved one, you know that feeling of waking up the next day realizing I will never have a conversation with them like we used to. My life has now Change. If you've ever been fired from a job, you know the feeling of waking up and saying, man, today is, it's just different. I have to find a new normal, a new rhythm. I can't go back to the way that things were. Sometimes life changes and it is completely, it's completely out of our control. Now, the song by, by Brett is uh, from the optimistic point of view. When he sings, he's talking about some of the positive life changes. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, for the, but for the most part... I want to focus on the negative life changes because I think it's the negative ones that in, end up scarring us, the ones that, that end up impacting us for the worse. In, in life, whenever we experience big, massive life changes that are out of our control, we as human beings tend to respond in one of two ways. The two ways we react to unexpected life changes, if you're taking notes, I encourage you to write this down. Two ways we react to unexpected life changes. Number one, we avoid feeling the change. Number one, we avoid feeling the change. There are a lot of people who we just, we don't like feeling pain. We don't like feeling disappointment. And so we just avoid it. And you are the ones who, when a death happens or when a big crisis happens, you just go back to your normal quickly. You don't take time to heal. You don't take time to process it. You don't take time to grieve or to go see a counselor. You just jump back into work. You just want to get back to the normal. And there are some who just avoid feeling the change. There are others though, and this is number two if you're taking notes, number two is we numb the pain of the change. There are some of us who we so hate disappointment and so hate the, the difficult life changes that we numb it, and people numb it through various things. We numb it through, through food or overeating or binge eating, or we numb it through cigarettes or alcohol or drugs, or some people numb it by, by shopping or, or sleeping, that, that something that may not be uh, even evil or may not even be bad in its own proper circumstance, it becomes unhealthy because we were doing it to try to numb numb the pain. Now, I, I for one, I am, am a person who numbs the pain. I don't, I don't like feeling pain, and so I, I numb it by entertainment and, and, and by food. Would you just humor me, for, if you're watching this live, in the comments, would you just post, are you a person who avoids the feelings of change, or are you a person who numbs the pain of change? Just, just put your, your answer in, in the comments. So life change happens. And once you realize how you naturally react to change, the next thing that we have to do is choose a different response. And that actually is our big idea for, for today. If you're taking notes, I encourage you to write this down. The big idea is choose to respond instead of react to life changes. Choose to respond instead of react to life changes. And I want to show you this in the scripture that we're going to read today. The scripture is written by 
Paul. And at Next Level, we say that Paul is a primetime player. He wrote over half of the New Testament, and Paul went through some massive life changes. When we first meet Paul, he goes by the name of Saul. So going through a name change is, is a pretty big life change. He goes from Saul to Paul. When we first meet Saul, he is a person who persecutes Christians. That is, he is a person who, who is arresting them, who, who is saying, I believe what you're doing is so wrong. I wish harm upon you. He, he uh, advocates for the death, for the killing of Christians, and, and goes out to arrest Christians. Paul goes from someone who persecutes Christians to meeting Jesus to then leading this Christian movement. That's a big, massive life change. Paul experienced some other life changes. Uh, he was persecuted for his own faith. He was thrown in prison. He was shipwrecked. He was bit by a snake. Paul was, was stoned. And when I say stoned, I'm not talking about... I'm talking about they took rocks and threw it at him to try to kill him. Paul went through some massive massive life changes. So when he writes what he is about to write, I want you to know that this is a guy who's experienced the highs and the lows of life. And I want to read to you our theme verse, and then we'll break down the scriptures. I want to invite you to read the verse with me. It's Philippians 4, 13. When I get to the reference, Philippians 4, 13, there's two dots. We like to have a little bit of fun, and we say dot, dot. I want to invite you to, to say that with me, wherever you're watching this at, just to say it out nice and loud. Philippians 4, 13, it says... I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, dot, dot, 13. Now that we've read the text, let's go to God in prayer. God, we come before you and we ask in Jesus' name that you would speak to our hearts today. But God, we don't just need to hear from you. We need the strength and the ability to do what you tell us to do. So help us to be people who obey you, even when we're afraid. And God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so now that we've read our theme verse, I want to rewind a little bit and go to Philippians 4, 10 through 11 to get a little bit more context of what Paul is writing. Paul says in Philippians 4, 10 through 11, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. So Paul is writing the church in Philippi a thank you letter because they had provided a gift basket for him. In Paul's day and age, when someone was in prison, the government did not provide for their needs. And so if you needed a blanket, if you needed food, if you needed toiletries, whatever you needed, it had to be provided by your friends and family. And there was often so much shame that came upon being in prison that even though Paul wasn't in prison for committing a crime, he was in prison for loving Jesus, even though he hadn't done anything wrong, there still was shame in knowing that, that someone was, was in prison. So oftentimes people abandoned them and didn't meet their needs. But the church in Philippi takes up concern for Paul and they send him a gift basket. They provide for his needs. And Paul says, thank you for taking up concern. But then he says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. Now, Paul, in just a little bit, is going to tell us uh, what this lesson is. He's going to tell us specifically what he learned. But before we get there, I want to highlight, because I think it's so important, that Paul had to learn to be content. Uh, one of the issues in my own life, and, and I believe an issue with a lot of Christians, is that we want things to happen instantly for us. We want God just to change us. We, wanna, we want there to be an easy button where we just no longer desire bad things and we just are quickly fixed. And I, I don't know if you ever played a, a video game, but I love it in a video game when, when my, the player that I'm using gets an upgrade, gets a new power. I would love it if life was like that, to where if you just say a prayer, you get this instant upgrade. Or maybe if you've ever been on an airplane and you were in, in the back of the plane in the cheap seats and for whatever reason they gave you an upgrade and you were able to move up to first class. It's this amazing feeling. And there are difficult circumstances where I'm like, God, I'm in the back of the plane. God, this is horrible. I'm cramped. This isn't what I wanted. Help me out. I just want to upgrade. I just want to move up. And it is a, a, a desire that I think we have. But the problem is, is that there are no easy buttons in life. And when it comes to changes in our lives, we often want something to instantly help us, and when we don't instantly find that help, we react to change in one or two negative ways. We naturally react by either resisting, just ignoring it altogether, or by trying to numb it, and both of those reactions are unhealthy. 
And Paul says he had to learn. That is, there are things that are natural to him, and he had to learn to do something different. He had to learn how to respond in healthy ways to life changes. Paul goes on to say in Philippians 4.12, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have, and now there's three words that are underlined for you. Would you read those words with me on the count of three? One, two, three. Learned the secret. So before we get into the secret of what Paul has learned, I want to highlight here, he says, I've learned the secret. The secret of what? Being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Before we get to the secret, I want to highlight that Paul has said the secret is the same response, whether life is good or life is bad, whether there are changes that are benefiting us or changes that are harming us. No matter what the circumstances, Paul has learned. He has put into practice. He has learned how to do something. And I want to highlight this because not every life change that you experience is negative. There are some life changes that benefit us. And if we're not careful, success has a way of destroying us. It's been said that the greatest enemy of success is success. That is, when you have success, if you're not careful, the success of a change can impact you for the the worse. It can impact you for the negative. I was reading an interesting article that was talking about celebrities and how Uh, They've changed from finding success to the humble beginnings to where they became millionaires, where they became famous. And uh, it talked about how there are some celebrities who, even though they've received massive amounts of success, they haven't changed their personality. They still remain uh, enjoyable people. They still remain kind of grounded. And the person in the article said the one thing that successful people who remain grounded have in common is that they continue to do everyday ordinary chores. He said that the people who find success and then pay for people to do everything for them, pay for someone to do their laundry, pay for someone to do their dishes, pay for someone to do all their cooking, pay for someone to do their lawn, those that pay for everything that is even remotely difficult, those that pay for that service end up becoming entitled and end up becoming snooty and end up allowing success to ruin them. But he said, those who who have a humble approach, who say, yes, I have success, but I'm going to maintain some humility and still do some everyday ordinary chores, they've been able to have success and not be changed. I tell you this just to say that if we're not careful, life change, even when it's a good life change, even when it's a promotion, even when when it's more money, even when it's a a, a marriage or, or kids or something that we've been asking God for, if we are not careful, even good changes can end up becoming bad things in our life. And Paul says, I've learned the secret. I've learned the secret to success. I've learned the secret to hardship. I've learned the secret. With that being said, let's look at what he says the secret is. Philippians 4, 13, it's our theme verse for today. Paul says, the secret is, I can do all of this through him who gives me strength. I can do all of this, all of what? I can have success and not cause it to change me. I can respond to success instead of reacting to success. I can respond to difficulties of life instead of reacting to the difficulties of life. I can learn how to respond instead of react. I can do all of this in my own strength. No, Paul says not in my own strength. I can do all of this through him who is him, Jesus, who gives me strength. The song that we're featuring today, the chorus says, ain't it funny how life changes. The chorus goes on to say, you can't stop it. Just hop on the train and you never know what's going to happen. You make your plans and you hear God laughing. Life changes. We make our plans, but yet life rarely goes the way that we planned it. And I know right now, We're having to change a lot of our plans and that's leading to a lot of disappointment. That's leading to frustration. Maybe even some of you are feeling depressed or or some sadness about the changes. Life changes. We cannot control those, but we can learn how to respond to the changes of life in a healthy way. I believe that we can come out of this quarantine I believe we can come out of it better people. I believe that we can come out of it better spouses and better moms and dads, or if you're a kid, a better kid. I believe we can come out of this better if we are intentional and we learn. And Paul says the secret is I can do all things. I can do all of this through 
Jesus who gives me strength. This is so crucial because you cannot control, you cannot control everything that happens to you. Some of you have woken up and you have had changed roles because you were the parent, but now you are the parent and you are the teacher and it stinks and it's difficult. And you can't change it. You can close your eyes and hope that it goes away. You can wish and pray for an easy button, but it's not changing. We are going through difficult things. And in the midst of this difficulty, Paul says you can learn. You can learn the secret to handle this difficulty. Don't rely on your own strength. Rely on the strength of Jesus. Here's the truth of of the matter. If you don't practice relying on God for strength, you will react poorly to life changes. We don't practice relying on God for strength when things go bad or when things go good. We practice relying on God for strength every single day. And when you practice it every single day, then we can learn to be like Paul and we can learn to be content that even when things don't go my way, even when things don't go the way I expected it to, I can learn to be content. I can learn to respond instead of reacting in an unhealthy way. So so practically speaking, how do we do this? How do we live this out? I want to give you something that I want to encourage you to practice because Paul said he learned this. That is, it's not natural. So please hear me on this. Just hearing this sermon is not going to change your life. If you want the sermon to impact you, you have to put it into practice. And here's how we live this out practically. Before you react, think about how God would want you to respond. Before you react, think about how God would want you to respond. That is, the next time something doesn't meet your expectations, the next time a disappointment happens, the next time a change happens, whether it's good or bad, take a second to literally pause. (sighs) Take a deep breath. And before you react, say, how would God want me to respond to this moment? What is a way that I can honor God in this moment. When I have success, how can I honor God in this moment? When I'm going through a difficult season, how can I honor God in this moment? God, how would you want me to respond? In my own strength, I want to complain. In my own strength, I want to avoid this. In my own strength, I I want to numb this. In my own strength, I want to do something that's unhealthy, but I'm called to a higher standard. And so in Christ, God, how do you want me to respond in this situation? Help me to respond in a way that is honoring to you. I I know that this isn't easy. I wish there was an easy button. I wish I could snap my fingers and we would all do this well and we would all do this easy. But listen, life is not easy. Paul, when he wrote these words, he was living in a Roman prison. That's not easy. You will face disappointments in this life. You will face disappointments as a Christian. You may be struck down one day, but you're not destroyed. You may have taken a beating, but you're not done breathing. I may have been knocked down, but like Chumbawamba, I'm going to get up again. You hear what I'm saying? Can I get an amen in the comments for 90s one-hit wonders? We all experience difficulties in this world. All of us do. We get knocked down. We get beat up. But in Christ, we can keep going. Years ago, back when I still had hair, I went out for a jog, and this was before I even had kids at home, and uh, it was in Yorktown, we were living in a town home, and it was a little bit cooler outside, it was a little bit cold, but not freezing by any means, and the sun was out, and there was no snow anywhere on the ground, it was was sunny, and I thought, you know, the weather's decent, Um, it's it's, it's good weather for, for a jog, and so I leave my house and I go out for a jog and I I jog a mile away from my house. And when I get to the mile mark away from my house, the weather changes and it starts to snow. And this is instant. This wasn't on anyone's radar. No one saw this coming. They weren't predicting snow. But out of nowhere, a snowstorm came through. I'm talking it went from sunny to cloudy. Everything was gray. And the snow, it was snowing so hard that I couldn't see but a few feet in front of me. And I had to jog a mile back to my house. It was miserable. This was a change I didn't see coming. And I I literally was feeling sorry for myself. I I stopped running because I could barely see anything. And I'm just standing there in the cold. And I'm like, God, you got to help my wife, Monica, who's sitting home in our nice warm house. 
You've got to inspire her. You've got to lead her. You've got to encourage her to have pity on her husband and to come rescue me. You've got to inspire her to get into the van and come and get me. And I'm literally just standing. There was snow everywhere. And I'm like, this is freezing. This is, I, I feel miserable. I just want to curl up in a ball in the fetal position on the ground and just die. This is such a horrible feeling. And I stood there for a few moments. And a couple cars passed me by. And I kept thinking, surely someone will have pity on me. Because no one saw this snowstorm coming. But here I am in shorts. I have a light jacket on, but I'm in shorts. And it is, it is like a blizzard in the 757. Here's the deal. No one came to rescue me. There was no easy button. I didn't get a power up. I didn't get an upgrade. So I just had to take one step at a time in the right direction. And it wasn't easy. In fact, it was incredibly difficult. When I, when I got home, though, my wife was waiting for me in the lobby, and she had a camera in her hand. And instead of coming to rescue me, she had been thinking about taking this photo. She couldn't wait to see how I, how I looked. And so she snapped this photo. It's going to come up on the screen for you. All right, listen, don't miss this. I have gone on lots of runs in my life, but very few are as memorable as the one where the weather changed instantly. And it's the same thing with you. You are going to experience changes. You're going, to, you're going through some changes right now. We all are going through changes. But the stories that we are going to tell one another in the years to come are not the stories where everything worked out perfect. It's the stories where life changed. And in the midst of a difficult change, God wants to change you. This is a difficult season and it stinks. But in the midst of this stink, in the midst of this disappointment, we can actually create some great memories. We can do some things that, that we will we'll talk about for, for years to come. And I know that, that our reactions are normal. Our reactions of, of uh, avoiding um, or numbing the difficulties of life, that's a natural. But God wants to, call, he wants to change us from the inside out and he wants us to respond instead of react. And that's our big idea one more time. I want to give it to you again. Choose to respond instead of react to life changes. Choose to respond instead of react to life changes. So I want you to practice that this week. I want you to practice that by the next time something happens and it's not what you expected. It doesn't meet your expectations. It's a, it's a disappointment or it's a change, whether it's a, a change for the good or it's a change for, for the bad. I want you to embrace the change by taking a deep breath and then asking, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to respond in this circumstance? That takes us to today's win. The win is what we do with all this. And the win is the same thing as the big idea. Choose to respond instead of react to life changes. Guys, the, Paul shares this secret, and I'm so thankful that he does. Because life, we will face changes. But we can respond to them in healthy ways to where on the other side of the change, we actually become better people for it. We pray with me? God, we come before you. And we ask that you would give us the strength. The strength is not natural to us. In our own strength, God, we avoid discomfort. We avoid disappointment, God, or we numb disappointment. And God, we have created all sorts of problems for our own lives because we haven't faced the disappointments head on. We've ignored them or we've tried to numb them. And God, I ask right now in Jesus' name that you would give us the strength to face these difficulties, to face these tough situations. That God, we would pause and that we would respond in a way that is honoring to you. In your strength, God, give us the strength to respond in healthy ways to life's changes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us uh, today. Can't wait to see you next week for part three of our series.